again. Here we are with Lesson 7, corresponding with Chapter 10 in your manual, having to do with utilities. In other words, the various little features that we've added to do this and that in terms of services uh, for your operation of the system. Notice how fast that last tutorial went? Well, we're going to try to make this one go very fast, too, because we're on the home stretch here. Unless, uh, unless the present plans change, this will be the last tutorial. So, yahoo! We're, we're near completion. All right, again, you can look in the table of contents section of your manual if you want to follow along, uh, starting with subsection A under Chapter 10, which has to do with SD Backup. SD Backup, what does that mean? Well, it's as simple as this. Service Desk is going to be doing... Um, oh, by the way, you know what that thing is right there? That's called a tooltip. Tooltips come up when your mouse hovers over various things. Wherever we've thought that it would be useful to have a tooltip, we've created one like that. Although, if you just happen to set your mouse on a place like that, it looks kind of funny if you weren't actually looking for it. Anyway, um, you're going to be keeping tons of important information in your Service Desk system so much important information that you could scarcely afford to lose it. Therefore, it's very important that you have a backup system that's designed to assure that any data loss you suffer is minimal at most. Uh, an important part of that backup system is provided for you in, by way of what we call SD backup. The way it works is you'll want to uh, click on Start on your Windows taskbar, and then uh, go to the Rossware Computing Program Group. Here it is on my computer. And find SD Backup right there. Now, actually, I should back up here in a second and say you should be doing this at any computer in your network aside from the computer that you've decided to use as the file server. And I'll explain to you why. The basic idea with SD Backup is that it runs from any computer in the network aside from the server and it makes automatically makes periodic backups on its own hard drive of all of your critical service desk data from off of the server. And that way you've got a backup on a different computer than the server. You can run it from the server too and that would give you some protection but it wouldn't save you in case that server's hard drive crashed and, and in case all the data on it was lost. Basically, you can just click on it here. It gives you a little message here to tell you how it's running and so on. And you just want to keep it running uh, basically all the time um, on whatever computer you want to have it running from. Uh, I'm actually going to end it here because I don't want it to really do its thing. It's giving me a little warning that it won't be doing its job when it's not running, which is obvious. But uh, anyway, aside from from simply starting it up in that manner by going to the Rossware Computing Program Group and turning it on, there's something even better you could do, and that's to rig it up within Windows so that any time you boot up the computer into Windows, Windows will automatically start this SD backup program. Um, that's done differently uh, depending on whether you're in a Windows 98 or a Windows XP or equivalent environment. There is a significant footnote in the manual that tells you how to do it. You can look it up in the index or find it in that section by reading contextually. But anyway, it's it's uh, I I think it makes most most sense by far by having it s to have it set up on one of those computers so that it starts up automatically when the computer starts, and that way if that computer is running, you can be confident you've got those backups. Um, it happens to make backups. I'll go ahead and escape out of that. It happens to make backups. Uh, once an hour, once a day, once a week, once a month, and once a year, each in in a separate folder. And the reason for that is with any automatic backup system, um, there's always a chance that you might have a file go bad, say, a file that contains important data. And uh, you don't realize it until your automatic backup system has taken that bad version of the file and copied over the good backup that you had. So now you've just got two bad versions of that file because of the automatic system did the co copying over before you realized to stop it. Um, that's uh, always a possibility with an automatic, sy automatic system and that's the reason what happens is uh, let, let's suppose that you do have something go wrong with the file and the hourly backup happens before you discover it. 
but you do discover it before the nightly or daily backup occurs. Well, you've still got data that's less than 24 hours old. But let's suppose you don't discover it until the next day, and therefore the daily slash nightly backup has occurred. Well, you've still got data that's a week or less old. Of course, if you discover it soon enough, you'll have data that's less than an hour old. Uh, so that's basically how the system works. By the way, there's a little connected utility accessed with, uh, I think it's Alt F1, we could review here. It's called View Backups. Yeah, it's Alt F1, or we can click here. And what this allows us to do is to specify the particular computer and location where the uh, backup files are that we want to look at. And when we select that location, we will see all of the the files backed up in all the regular service desk form so we can decide whether the backed up version is better than what we have um, on the server and we can decide whether we want to copy those over or not. We got the flashing light here to remind us we're looking at actually backed up data and we got the red background and so on. Uh, I'll hit F1 again to take us out of there. So that's a handy utility if you ever have any file corruption. It's very handy. Uh, the, one, the one limitation of the SD backup system for providing with backups I might mention is what if your uh, office burns down or if someone comes in and steals both your server computer and the computer you have SD backup running on. In either case you've lost your data. Uh, therefore SD backup shouldn't be your entire solution. You should also uh, periodically um, once a week or once a month whatever your level of paranoia requires copy all of your service desk data onto probably a CD and take it home with you. Um, the, the data that you need to copy, incidentally, will all be found. I'm going to bring up uh, Windows Explorer here. Well, no, I won't. I'll just tell you. And it tells you in the manual, too. It's all found in the Net Data subfolder under the SD main folder uh, on your server. So that's the stuff you'll want to back up. Okay, so much for backups. Uh, next subject B, subsection B under utilities, is uh, SD tools. And that's another item we can bring up uh, by clicking on Start, Programs, Rossware Computing Program Group, and SD Tools. This is the SD Tools utility. There are two things we can do with this utility. One is uh, set up our invoice printout, and the other is set up our source of job survey. Um, if you look in the back of your manual, you'll see the invoice uh, setup we've used in my office. We're talking about the standard ticket here, not a finished form such as we dealt with two, tut two tutorials ago. Uh, you're not tied into any particular form. You can use any form form you want, but of course, if you use any particular form, you're going to have the service desk has to know where where on the form it's supposed to print each item of text, and that's what you use this for. Um, you can select a file, or you can just hit Escape and create a new file, which I'll do here. Let's suppose we're doing an invoice that's eight and a half inches wide. It's asking us to input that, and eleven inches long. Um, this sheet of paper here. Or it's supposed to be sort of represent a sheet of paper. Um, represents that size. You can see I can scroll up and down here to, to move. And these are the various items of standard text that Service Desk typically prints in on your service ticket. And what you can do basically is simply, that's the invoice number obviously. I'm going to move this off. That th If you want to have a graphic, in, a, like a picture on your invoice, uh, that's what this would be used for. Um, I'm just going to drag it off because I don't want it in the way. Uh, let's say our invoice number, or our, our uh, yeah, our invoice number is going to, we think it fits about right there on our invoice. I'd have whatever my invoice form was in front of me and kind of try and be trying to eyeball these things. Let's suppose our description goes there and our items type goes there, our item make goes here, our appointment date and time goes about there, I think and uh, oh my date written goes right there. So anyway I'll arrange all these items and eyeball them and until I think they're in about the right place that they should print on my invoice format and uh, then I can do a test print and print out on an actual sheet of paper and line it up to an actual invoice and see how it's fitting and if it doesn't fit very well I can I can uh, keep adjusting these items until they're perfect. Also I can right click on an item and I can select any font characteristics I want. Sizes, types of fonts, and so on. Um, this particular one right here, actually let's say we want Crescent. Um, as I set it, 
the system will ask if I want all the others to be the same font type. If I say yes, it will change all those to the same font type. Ooh, that's a weird font type. I'm going to go back to something different. That's too odd. Uh, that was not quite so odd. Um, so you can set any font type you want and so on. Uh, the only one that didn't change with that was this one because this we figured this one you'll probably typically want something different kind of like I right clicked on that by the way to invoke uh, um, I for this one I like a font I've got loaded in this computer called key punch where in the heck is it here actually I think I, I think I could just type it there it is okay I'm gonna go with that one and I like to have it big for the invoice number too there I think that makes a good looking invoice number all right uh, so you set it up the way you want it um, let's suppose I've got everything compared to its own position where it should be, but I need to move everything up or down a bit. You can use these nudge buttons to move everything down, move everything up, and so on. Um, another detail, uh, all these items over here, we call this the optional items garage. These are other things you can also print on your invoice if you want to. They're not standard, but you can drag them over and set them up to print wherever you want them to print. And... Uh, this this one in, in particular, this one's kind of interesting. This is extra notes as become part of your more info form uh, in Service Desk, and you can double click on this to set it whatever size you want. Let's say I want this to be seven and a half inches wide and one inch tall, and that gives me lots of room for extra notes. So anyway, that's the basic setup. Once you've uh, got it all set up, you'll click on Save Changes and uh, you're going to want to name the file. The, the manual will help you, but uh, it's going to be some derivation of your company's name here with a PRG extension, and you're going to want to put it in the net data folder of your server, and once that's done, all of your service desk stations, when it's time to print up a service ticket, will find the file that describes this format, and that's the format they'll print in. One more little detail here. Right here it says on SD printout, reverse standard customer build location assumptions. That's so that, well, your manual will tell you about it, but uh, s suppose that uh, your, your practice is kind of the opposite of what we use in Service Desk, and uh, uh, you only want to want to print a separate name and address if, if it's a billing job, and otherwise you're going to treat the location name as a customer. You know, that allows you to do that in terms of how it prints out. So, various instructions up here. That's how all that's done. Okay, uh, let's uh, deal with the second function we do here in SD Tools, which is the source of job survey. No, I don't want to save those changes. Uh, click on it again here, source of job survey. Ask us to name a file that we want to open. Um, actually, let's go ahead and open that file right there. Uh, basically what you're setting up here is the list of ads that's going to appear in front of your call taker when they're surveying the customer as to why they called you for your source of business survey. And what you simply want to do is uh, make a series of lines here that describe each of, each of your various ads. Uh, the format I like to use was to have the page number because that allowed the call taker to ask the customer uh, which page number is the add-on that you called us from. And, and if the call taker said uh, page 49, then, then the, I mean, if the caller said page 49, which is easy for them to look at, then the call taker can just figure, well, that's obviously this ad right here, and then select this ad. So anyway, just, just create this, this list of ads. Let's suppose I was in the process of creating this list, and I've made all these. I can just hit Enter, and uh, I can do a new one here. And it's just text. It's, it's nothing technical. Let's say it's... Uh, um, uh, max, max, yellow pages, and uh, anyway, when you're done, you save it. the The uh, manual will tell you the particular name and location you need to use, and then that's the list that will come up um, during your survey. It's that simple. So that's the end of uh, that section for uh, SD Tools. That's all you're really doing here. I'm not going to save back to service desk here. Again, that's a separate utility. You access it uh, into the Rossware Computing Program Group, which actually leads us to the next item, which is, I don't know if I even need to tell you, tell you about this, but it's in the manual. I told you I was following it, so 
It's called Zips. It's just a little utility we included for you because we we actually made it for purposes of, of compiling your custom data. Um, you can type in any zip code you in, any zip code you want to here, and as fast as you can type, it will show you all the cities that match. Or you can type in a city name. And uh, actually, I'm moving to Shelton, Washington, and that's my zip code. So anyway, uh, that's kind of handy if you want to use it. You can uh, keep this running and just bring it up anytime you want. It's a pretty handy little utility if you have a need to to match get matches between zips of cities. Um, Section D in Chapter 10, the on-screen manual. Um, we'll also click on Start and go to the Rossler Computing Program Group SD manual. Uh, this will load an electronic version of the manual for you in Adobe Acrobat. And here I'll enlarge it here. Oops, that's a little bit big. Uh, this is uh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to change the size of my page. So I can see more there. That's more reasonable. Um, you can just page down through here. This is Adobe Acrobat's utility you're looking at, so it's it's all their stuff that you're looking at here to read the manual. Uh, a couple of benefits with this electronic version. One is uh, um, it's easy to have other people read the manual here if you happen to have the paper version or vice versa. Uh, the bigger benefit, though, is we're frequently adding features and changing things, and changing and adding to the manual accordingly. Um, the manual that you get when we produce your package will be absolutely up to date to that moment in time, the paper manual I'm referring to. Uh, but it will grow out of date as time goes by. And unfortunately, the paper manual is kind of expensive to replace. We, we are happy to print a new one for you as often as you want, but we charge significantly for that. Um, on the other hand, we make uh, the electronic version updated, available for you uh, off the website without any separate fee whatsoever. So um, if you're wanting to look at up-to-date stuff, the electronic version of the manual is a good way to do it. Okay, let's escape out of uh, Adobe Acrobat there. We're back to Service Desk. Uh, the main menu I've shown you before. For the most part, the main everything you can do in the menu, you can do elsewhere. It's just easier sometimes when you're a learner to use these paths. Um, and of course, the command summary is very handy. Um, but really, virtually everything is accessible elsewhere. Uh, the auto archive feature. I say virtually everything. Here's something that's not. Um, I've talked to you before, I think probably in the first or second lesson, about how um, we have all kinds of context. The call sheets themselves where records that are done or deleted need to get moved out of the current workspace, I, s I should say mark for deletion, and uh, into an archive space. Uh, the job record's another one. Uh, accounts receivable, and so on. Um, in the early days of Service Desk, uh, you had to invoke the processes periodically in each context yourself. Uh, we have one here for example, says remove items paid in full. Uh, here we have one that says run archive routine, whole file. Uh, there's there's nothing visible in the call sheets, but uh, it's actually Alt A. And if I if I do Alt A here, the message comes up, tells us that's what it's going to do. And sure enough, uh, the job records that were either marked for deletion or whatever um, are now no longer there. Here I'll mark this one for deletion. You notice it stays there until I run the process and then it disappears. Uh, that's the case in virtually every such context. Anyway, it was it's a little bit of a burden to have to remember to periodically go into each such context that involves this kind of archiving process and do the task. For that reason, we created what we call the Auto Archive feature. To set it up, uh, you can simply go only, only needs to be done from one computer because uh, it only takes one computer to do the process go to whichever computer you want to have do it and just check this item right here and save local values. And what will happen is if that computer is running overnight, I think it's 1.30 a.m., it goes through all the various contexts that need to have this periodic housekeeping done and it invokes a pro process to do that housekeeping, uh, which is very handy. I'm going to escape. Actually, I don't want to save that. Um, it only does it if the computer is turned on overnight. 
um, it looks for that particular time as the clock goes by and if it's turned on and if that feature is turned on then it will run the processes if you don't wish to have your computers on overnight but you want to avoid the task of going to each of the separate contexts to do it you can simply come over here to file functions and click right here invoke auto archive and it'll do the same thing that it would have done overnight based just on you having initiated it there in other words go through all those contexts and run the various processes okay next subsection uh, the settings form I believe we showed you the settings form pretty thoroughly in, in introduction um, it's control F1 to bring it up or if you forget that you come over here settings control F1 it reminds you that's another way to get to it I think I showed it to you fairly thoroughly you got a bunch of options here a bunch here you, re you can read more in the manual um, basically you fill things out list of names of people sitting at the various computer stations in your office even if it's one one man one man operation you'll put your name and insert it here list of technicians same thing and so on it's fairly uh, straightforward uh, last section setting your password uh, this does require menu access uh, the system does require a password for security purposes in several contexts until you've set your password the way the system is configured now um, you can simply hit enter anytime it asks you for your password but when you when you're ready to really operate you if you got anybody else working in your organization you really should set the password to provide yourself with the security and basically just uh, file functions about service desk and this is typical to any Windows program you got an about form that tells you the creation date and who created it and various things like that uh, this will tell you the creation date of the actual program code uh, but to set the password you'll simply uh, click on set password obviously and uh, follow the dialogue there it's that simple so uh, that's the end of chapter uh, of lesson 7 which dealt with the subject matter in chapter 10 and uh, unless we uh, change our minds, this is the last tutorial. And I thank you very much for your attention and time, and I hope it's been informative for you. And uh, I hope you have a great time using Service Desk. Uh, please let me know. Thank you. Bye.